I get a lot of questions about how strong you need to be to make it through special operations training. Let me answer by discussing naive people, expectations, minimum competitive fitness standards, the fitness lifestyle, and preparation. I get questions from naive young men who proudly boast that they're able to do 20 push-ups and ask if that's enough to make it through special operations training. The answer is simple, absolutely not. You might be able to show up to Air Force basic training only able to do 20 push-ups, but you won't last the first hour of the year-long special operations training pipeline. I assume these stupid questions come from kids who play too many video games. They play the tough guy in the video game from the air-conditioned basement of their parents' house. They have no idea how heavy it is to carry body armor, a rucksack, and a rifle. They have no idea what it's like to be cold, wet, hungry, tired. Video games are not like real life. Real life is heavy. The one good thing about naive people is that they're easy to recruit. And since 80 to 90% of applicants don't make it through special operations training, the flunkies are quickly transferred to other, more needed occupational specialties. Let's move on to expectations. Special operations training is not for the average person. It's not for the weak or the scared. It's for the best of the best, the strong and the committed. Maybe you go to the gym and work out hard for an hour, maybe even two, but this is still not enough. Expect to work out all day long. You might not be in a gym all day long, but you might carry a 50-pound rucksack and a 7-pound rifle while patrolling for 24 hours straight. You are used to getting a full night's rest. Not anymore. Special operations training makes you work throughout the night. Expect to have sleepless nights and to endure several days in a row with only minimal sleep. Do you like to be comfortable? Well, of course, we all do. We try to stay out of extreme weather and bring umbrellas or a rain jacket. I'm not sure if a rain jacket would do any good here. You should expect to be cold and wet. You don't cancel a war if it's raining or cold, so why would you cancel training if it's raining or cold? I'm convinced that a lot of people think that special operations is like the Boy Scouts, but with guns. You have campouts and you go backpacking, but this is not reasonable. You need to expect extreme hardships during special operations training. This is the only way to ensure that you're tough enough to make it into the community. If you are a quitter when times get hard or heavy or cold or wet or when you're exhausted, then we don't want you on our teams. Let's move on to physical fitness standards. The official SEAL SWIC website has a lot of great information about preparing for special operations training. For example, they report that the average SEAL officer can swim 500 yards in 9 minutes, do 85 perfect form push-ups in 2 minutes, do 85 sit-ups in 2 minutes, and do 20 perfect form pull-ups and run 1.5 miles in 9 minutes. This is a great starting point of reference for an average member of the special operations community. 85 push-ups, 20 pull-ups, and a 6-minute mile. I also want to highlight that these numbers are averages, not absolutes. For example, when I started Special Forces training, I could max my push-ups and my sit-ups with 82 each. My max for perfect form pull-ups at that time was 18. I was never a great runner. That is why I always recommend that you learn how to run efficiently. The sooner the better. I couldn't run a 6 minute mile, but for sure I could run a 630 mile. I could run a 7 minute mile repeatedly and an 8 minute mile all day long. Depending on the mission, we sometimes don't even carry body armor or a rucksack. But for other missions, we carry both. I've had to ruck over 40 miles in a single day, and my backpack for the beginning of our Robin Sage training exercise was over 100 pounds. But I gotta tell you that the hardest day of training that I ever endured was during small unit tactics training when I had to fireman's carry a fellow special forces student for what seemed like forever. I had to dig deep to carry that guy. Even years later I remember how hard it was for me. Let's move on to the physical fitness lifestyle. When I was on a team, we would do one to three hours of physical fitness every day, five days a week. Being fit wasn't just so that we could endure initial special operations training, fitness was a way of life. I remember about 10 years ago, I was on leave visiting family members in the Rocky Mountains. 
I woke up early and I went to my favorite trailhead with a small bottle of water and a power bar. I then ran four hours uphill to the top of the snow peaked mountain. Then it took me three hours to run down. I took a quick shower then I met everyone at our favorite Mexican food restaurant for a late lunch. Physical fitness is a way of life for those within the special operations community. We don't train for an entire year to finish a four hour marathon. We do seven hours of hard trail running just like that because we are fit and hard and nothing scares us. And then we go for lunch like nothing happened. So let's do a quick recap of what we've discussed. You need to expect extreme hardships. Expect to go days without sleep and for sure to endure days with only minimal sleep. You should expect to be cold and wet. Expect to work out all day long. Being mentally strong enough to endure soft training is more important than being physically strong enough. But on a practical side, the average physical standard is to be able to do 85 push-ups, 20 pull-ups, and run a 6-minute mile. There's a bit of wiggle room here. For example, if you're a slow runner, then you better be strong. But if you aren't strong enough to do 20 pull-ups, you better be able to do at least 15 and run like lightning. Either way, you should be able to carry a heavy ruck all day long and be able to fireman's carry someone off the battlefield. Let's finish off with preparation. Special Forces training takes its toll on your body, and so I recommend that when you are preparing for Special Operations training that you do everything you can to minimize the impact on your body. Here's a picture of Special Operations Combative training. I recommend that you prepare for Special Operations Combatives training by mastering the basics while using a heavy bag that doesn't hit back. Here's Special Operations Patrolling. I recommend you harden your feet and your shoulders in a less evasive manner. Just before I went into Special Forces training, I took two weeks off and went backpacking on the Appalachian Trail with some friends. My backpack was between 55 and 65 pounds and we walked 18 to 25 miles every day for two weeks. Here's some special operators doing some water training. Or maybe a nice swim across a frozen lake. I recommend that you prepare for this kind of training by putting in the laps and time at your local pool. Here's another picture of special operations training. If you don't have a helicopter or a ladder, then I recommend that you build your strength by doing pull-ups. The best way you can prepare for special operations training is to be smart and take every precaution you can to minimize the chance of injury. I just published an 8-day workout program deliberately calculated to test and validate aspiring members of the special operations community. It's called Special Operations Fitness Hell Week. I replicated all of the physically demanding aspects of special operations training while minimizing the miserable aspects of training like food and sleep deprivation. It's a very hard program, one I only recommend to already strong athletes. You will complete a cross-training workout, a self-defense cardio kickboxing session, and a swim each morning before breakfast. Continue on with a prescribed number of calisthenic exercises throughout your work or your school day, and then finish each evening with a ruck march, then repeat a slightly different variation for seven more days. This fitness program will give you a glimpse of how strong and committed you must be to endure elite special operations training. I didn't make this program to con kids all over the world into thinking that they can become Navy SEALs or Green Berets. I made this program so that future SOF operators will know what a typical week of training feels like. This is not a fitness event where you pay $1,000 to attend. It's a simple program for you to follow, no fanfare. Just a realistic challenge from one quiet professional to an aspiring one. If this workout program is too hard for you, then there is no way you will be able to complete special operations training. Like all of my products, I'm charging a minimal price. It is so much better to quit after downloading a $10 workout program than one week into a three year long enlistment. But if you do finish this workout program, then you know what it takes to endure an easy week of special operations training. Minus, of course, being cold, tired, and hungry, harassment from cadre, the fear of failure or letting your team down, the pressure of leadership, the stress of constant evaluation, and much heavier equipment. Okay, there you have it. A quick discussion of how strong you need to be to finish special operations training. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep on learning and to forward this video to a friend who needs to see this. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?